Hello and welcome. This is Erica Glessing. You're joining me with the Erica Glessing Show, where you receive eight minutes of daily inspiration for entrepreneurs and lightworkers. And I have a very special guest today. And she and I, like our names cross each other's paths because we just have this passion <laughs> for writing and creativity and creation. And I'm just so glad you could join me from Noosa, Australia. Hi, Lisa Murray. Hi, Erica. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah. So maybe just share with us like one of the things in your life that helped you kind of know that you would do this work and create creativity and expression. Oh, yeah. It's so interesting. I had burnout really, really, really severely about eight, nine years ago. And all the physical treatments weren't really working. And I went to this psychic and she said to me, well, you need to be more creative. And so I started playing with being creative in all sorts of different ways and yeah. writing, and, you know, all sorts of different things. And, of course, I got better quite a lot quickly. Now, it wasn't the only thing that helped me, but it certainly um, it was really interesting to see how much of a difference that made to my daily life. And so I've very much since that time had this, uh, I guess, daily practice of being creative in all kinds of different ways. And it makes me feel alive. Tell me a little bit about your book, the one that's just such a pretty cover. I can't think of the title. Tell us the title and tell yeah. us a little bit about that beautiful book. Okay, it's called Stop Waiting, Start Creating. Yeah. And, you know, and it came about because people would always say to me, you create so much, but I can never really get to start. And, you know, and I started like running, I run like a lot of events all over the world around the theme of, you know, creating and being creative. And that book literally came out of all of those conversations where people were telling me all of the things that were stopping them from creating. And I'm like, well, you know, what if you did this instead? What if you did that? And because I have like 10 million ideas. And, of course, I've been through some of those phases at different times as well. Right. So it really is this very practical book where you get lots of ideas on how you can actually start from wherever you are right now. You know, why don't you just tell us, like, if I have an idea for a book – and I don't know what to do next. It's kind of floating around in my consciousness. What's my next step? Ooh, well, um, it depends if your idea for a book has any words to it or not. Some people just have energies. And so you just got to ask, okay, so show me the tangible expression of these energies. Because that's often for a lot of people, like the energy is there before the actual book or the book name is there. So that's the first thing. The second thing is if you've got the book or the book name or, you know, you've got a sense of content, start writing. Like I literally wrote my book in the most random order. I did not sit down and write it from start to finish. I never do. I can't actually. And so literally just write the bit that you know and as you write those bits um i love scrivener it's like heaven for me it's scrivener it's writer's software and literally i just put them all into a scrivener document and as i keep writing i just keep ordering all of the different pieces and eventually it turns itself into a book and then i edit out what's really not required anymore so I love that. Like, and yeah, I love that, Lisa. That was something that I teach people too is don't try to have the same exact brain for writing and editing because you'll no. just end up erasing everything you write and you'll have nothing to show for it. <laughs> Exactly. And like literally for me, I like to write what's inspiring me that day. Mm. And, you know, and so therefore, you, you know, you're not going to be inspired in order. <laughs> like it's just not going to happen. So you want to write what actually, what actually is talking to you on the day. Well, you know, one of the things I just don't know why I'm asking you this. So I'll just ask it because it showed up is if I'm creative, how can I better monetize stuff without it feeling like, I can't explain it, but it seems like I meet a lot of people who paint, but then don't want to sell their paintings or they write, but they don't want to sell their words or they, and I've always written professionally. So see, for me, writing is something I kind of do for work. Yeah. But it's yeah. interesting. Like when you were just talking, cause I had an idea about like, not these mysteries have been playing with me for a long time mm -hmm. and they're starting to really get loud but it's such a different thing than I've ever done. And I, I'm like, I, even me, I'm like, how could that ever make money? So what do I do yeah. with that? What can oh. I do to shift that? Yeah, well, there's a few different things. So what, when you said it that way, it sounds like there's a doubt in there, right? So <laughs> <is a> <laughs> 
like doubt is a distraction. <gasps> yeah. And it's a really oh, it's great a way of stopping yourself from ever creating. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah, it's a great distraction and, you know, doubt is a great way of stopping you from ever creating anything. So uh-huh. the first thing you might want to do is literally look at, okay, so what if I just decided or just looked at it and said, okay, you're a distraction. Thanks very much. You can sit on the shelf for a while. You know, you can watch me, but you can't participate. Right. Um, so that's the first thing that I would look at is the doubt side of it. Now, the thing is some people don't want to monetize, you know, and like when I started painting, I didn't, it wasn't, I wasn't doing it to monetize it. I was doing it because I liked painting and it gave me a free brain actually to write. It actually yeah. sort of cleared out all the junk in my brain. Right. So you've got to look at it and go, well, what's fun for you? Okay, because if it's not fun for you to make money from it, then just enjoy it as a hobby. But if it is fun for you to make money from it, then ask, you know, your paintings, your writing, whatever it is, okay, how can I make money from you? Will you show me? Because they all have their own energies and it's literally this thing of, what if you would allow it to show you rather than trying to work it all out? We think we have to do it all by ourselves, but all of our creations actually have their own energy and their own awareness. You know, my business renamed itself about a week and a half ago. Oh, my and goodness. I, it was, oh, my goodness. I was sitting on the couch doing something totally unrelated. I wasn't thinking about renaming it. And it goes, here, I'd like to be called this. So its new name is Creative Alchemy. And I was like, you what? What was <laughs> and it was called like, name? Um, create, it, was, it was called Creativity Lab. And now it's right, right. That's what I recognize. Yeah. yeah. And now it alchemy is beautiful. Yeah, and you know, and yeah. this is and, but it brought a whole new like, energy to it. Yeah. And it's nice. This is where things Congratulations. Have their own. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have their own energy. And sometimes you've got to go with that. Now, I mean, of course, yeah. I was just like, what? And just it's been interesting since then. But I'm so excited and I'm happy to do it because I know that it's gonna create more. So you can't be in control oh of it. Oh my your gosh. Career. As I, as I pull back from, like, as, as I pull out the needing to make money, like, needing to validate the project with b- making money, as I look at, like, because I have this whole series of m- murder mysteries that have been, like, percolating with me for years, and years, like, maybe 18 years or something, oh. and I've been, uh, like, a lot of years, and um, as I pull back the requirement that they perform, which mm-hmm. I love what you just said, and I just say, would you like to be? Oh, it's so different. Yeah. Yeah. And I, li- I really want horses in it. And as uh-huh. I said that to you right this instant on this podcast, I got horse energy of horses that would help me. Right. Because I didn't make it so much about it requiring to be something. Yeah specific yeah that's well, nice this is the thing once the moment we define it it gets limited but like with creative alchemy i'm just like well what else would you like to be that i've never seen before and things have been coming really fast so I it's, love it's, it. it's actually this is the magic you know i know we were going to talk about the magic and this is the magic it's like when you allow whatever you're creating to contribute to you <sighs> and all of those different energies involved in it contribute it's amazing what can show up well, thank you so much, Lisa. How can we reach you and how can we find you and your company and your offerings? Yeah, if you go to creativitylab.tv or maybe by the time you hear this, it'll be creativealchemy with an I dot com. <laughs> um, I'm the reverse. Why don't you find me? <laughs> Thanks for awesome. having me here know, today. I'll, do, I'll just, whatever um, it is, just keep me updated and um, on the podcast description, I'll change it whenever it changes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you for coming. Today's show was brought to you by Audible. For a free book that you can listen to anywhere, go to audibletrial.com slash The Erica Blessing Show and enjoy a book from our wonderful sponsor, Audible.